Hello everybody, Darren here, and welcome back to City Skylines. Now in the previous episode, I started filling in some of the gaps in the city, trying to make it look a little bit more realistic and more lived in, using retaining walls and low rent housing with some parks and pedestrian paths to kind of get up and over and down into the area. I then started working on the cargo harbor and the rail services area, which is really going to be the focus for today's episode, as it's going to be a, a necessary foundation before building the bigger city. And to kick us off, I've got a time lapse of the area. So let's begin. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so to kick us off, we're going to start with a little bit of terraforming down by the coast. I think you'll find that most industrial harbors will be placed on quite a large, open, broad, flat area. So, of course, we have to terraform it to kind of recreate that shape and then also maybe just reshape the coastline just a little bit to better fit our key wall and then our harbor that's going to snap into it. Now, if you've watched the previous episode, you'll have seen a little bit of this already as the last 10 or 15 minutes, I built out this shape. And I decided to include it here just so that everyone has a more holistic view of how the entire area came together rather than me telling you, hey, go back, make sure you check out the end of this hour-long episode if you haven't seen it already or maybe we just have some new people coming by and they just want to know how to design out this sort of harbor and at least my thought process is on how to do it so the cargo harbor comes with a built-in railway if you upgrade it but unfortunately it has to stick out from one direction there's nothing you can do about that so I kind of used that made sure we put the harbor all the way right to the river's mouth edge on the left side we have the rail yard then above it and that's just for the maintenance of our trains. Now, I already have one in the distance, which we'll be getting rid of a bit later once this gets fully operational. But that was the idea behind it. Having a big, open, dedicated rail yard area, plus the cargo harbor. We can't really afford to have factories and things down here because it's actually at the bottom of the map and the wind is blowing up towards the city. So it just wouldn't really work. You know, the noise, uh, not the noise pollution, sorry, the air pollution would basically, you know, piss everyone off, uh, essentially. So that's why we're designing out a cargo harbor and rail services area, ideally placing in later in the episode the subway depot as well. So just a big old rail yard full of things and the subway will then make its way through the kind of hill underneath the highway into the city itself. So in shaping out the key walls, this is what I was talking about in the previous episode, it's very finicky but I've learned to do it a little bit better because there's no dedicated key wall in the game that you can actually use like City Skylines 1. There's just roads, and then there's also these kind of other walls that you can kind of use as well. But I found that using just roads is probably the easier method, generally speaking. So you can't actually build in water, but if you build a smaller little plateau just down from where you want, then you can kind of still create the retaining wall, and the wall goes all the way down, you know, really, really, really far, all the way probably to the zero coordinate on the z-axis. So what you can do is just have that smaller plateau, Use that as your anchor so that the road can actually be placed as a retaining wall and then just chop that away, let the river flow up to it and it'll be fine. So I found that method, as you can see here, just using it over and over again to be pretty good. Although I found that the river was deepening the further I went in because it's rising up a hill basically. So it's like, oh, that was a bit tricky. So I kind of had to use the slope tool every now and then to make that work out a little bit better. But I was pretty happy with it. I didn't want to spend forever bring it all the way around i'll probably do that though on both sides i reckon the river is just going to be key walled almost all the way up and uh, not to get ahead of myself but later in the episode we are looking at things to unlock and there's the hydroelectric dam and now knowing that we're not going to build a cargo harbor up river like i originally planned it seems reasonable to assume that the hydroelectric dam would actually be a pretty good thing for this place so we'll probably place that in somewhere as well and hopefully try to blend in key walls and roads and stuff into it nicely I toyed around with the idea of leaving little bits of um, sand or little smaller bits of coastline sticking out from the bottom and I've left a tiny little bit so that the water just looks a bit more shallow as it gets to the edge which I think looks quite nice. Now to create the junction coming down into the services area we have our two lane highway that was a bridge going across. I've since now made it a three lane highway and every now and then there's a portion where it's four lanes so that we can have an off ramp or an on ramp to get in and out of it. So I got rid of the original area and now we're just digging straight through the land. This is the highway that came built into the map by the way so I'm still just using that one. And I decided just to carve straight through it so that we have this big floating pocket of the road. Placing down some extra waypoints on that road by just double clicking the actual road onto itself allowed me to delete it and then curve it around again freshly which creates a bridge of course. So that looks quite nice. Uh, I wanted to use a, or just continuing the two-lane highway, like I said, that's being built in there, but it will be upgraded to three lanes in a moment. 
Uh, and then we just have the actual entrance slash exit down here. So the way I was basically doing this was grabbing the slope tool and sloping up to the exit uh, for the highway. And then I could kind of ramp the road up using that. The slope tool is really, really great since I've discovered how to use it properly because it just democratizes and like evens out the incline the entire way from point to point. So it's just really, really nice to get these smooth curves and smooth roads that go all the way up. I've also used it here in order to create the leveled, it's so difficult to kind of explain it verbally, but it creates that level incline, right? All the way up. And then you can kind of remove it after you place a few bits of the road as waypoints and then place the road back in to connect itself and it creates bridges. But it means that you're, the bridges are all at the right height, like the, the roads and the uh, off ramps or on ramps are all at the right height, all the way up and it's a real s nice steady incline. Long story short, if you were to do it without sloping the terrain first, it'd be really difficult to get a curve that curves around naturally all the way to where you want it to go and have it be a smooth incline all the way up. I at least find it really difficult to do that. So if you build the terrain first, you can use that as a sort of temporary structure to get you your easy curve and then remove it and then replace the road in to get the actual bridge effect. I hope that kind of makes sense. So that's what I was kind of learning to do here. This is like heavily edited. It took me... I think 90 minutes in total to build this interchange. Now, I don't mind. I have fun doing it. I have a podcast on and it's all good. It could be a little tedious trying to learn the tools. But once I figured out that sort of trick, um, that made everything much easier. So it took me the longest to do like the first and second exit. And then the other ones came much more naturally after the fact. So you can see me just doing it again here. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what to do now. Slope this side out. We'll join it up that way. I was also just figuring out loads of different tricks in order to try and get things to evenly like work as naturally as possible it's so funny i keep saying it and i'll say it every video really which is if i was to go into photoshop and just use the curve tool i could draw you almost like a perfect intersection so i know what i want i even draw it on paper usually beforehand but making it happen in game i struggle with so much i don't really have a mathematical mind so that's probably my my bad i'm sure you could probably math it out in terms of uh what curve you want, what angle you want, the length of every road segment, and you could probably do it quite mathematically because it's not perfectly symmetrical, but I was pretty happy with it. I think I'm getting better at it, but um, I do still struggle like just trying to get things to look relatively even and natural and smooth and not have terrain break through it. Now, I had two pieces of two lane highways coming off here. I tried to use the, uh, I think it's a four lane two way highway try to naturally merge them together I just couldn't do it so I ended up having two separate two lane highways that are just joined by a roundabout it's always the uh, the cop-out answer but it did work quite nicely to bring it in uh, so just joining the outer bits of the industrial cargo area here with a kind of an outer four lane road that's going all the way around that allows me to create another key wall here at the front I was just shaping out where this warehouse is gonna go I hadn't realized it at the time but there's this issue and I think I'll be talking about it later in the video which is that it can't, it says it can't be placed because there's no road access. Even though the, the building does have road access and it, it is operational, there is some weird little error there, even when I move it to different places. And the same is true for even upgrading it. So we'll have to see what that's about. Anyway, so that's pretty much it. Let's get to it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the rain has finally stopped and it's starting to make this place really shine. <laughs> so basically, the key wall is doing all the heavy lifting down here to make this place look like a much more organized, purpose-built, dedicated space for industrial and cargo harbor uh, and services, I should say, as well. So we have our rail yard, our cargo rail, all of that's there, the bus depot, and the plan is to add in a subway depot as well, somewhere up here with a bunch more rail lines and stuff going out from that. The reason I think that that'll be a good idea to do, we can actually start doing that a bit later in the episode, is because of the contour lines. This is overall a pretty flat and open area out here that we've made, and then it's a pretty steep incline to get up to the highway. So it seemed to me reasonable to assume that somewhere here we can have a straight line going into a tunnel that just leads into the city. The city is going to be in this big area here, and that's... I really do mean it when I say city. I don't consider this a city just yet, although it does say small city. Uh, we have 18,000 people, I guess, but it's more just like a town. To me, that's the town, and across the river is going to be the city, the high-density buildings, the hospital, police headquarters, you know, all the bigger buildings that come along with the city, including things like trams and the subway. 
and metro stations and all of that kind of thing. So that's the plan for up here, and I think in the next episode we can start laying out the roads for that. Now, a mistake I made with our interchange here would be the fact that I didn't really consider the fact that it's going to have to go that way as well. So, what I was thinking of doing is, we're left-hand drive, of course, so breaking off this road and just going left out that way. So, a kind of a split here. So, what we could do is bring this to a four-lane and have two of the lanes break off, one going right into the services area and one going left into the city. And then what we could do with this exit here, as you're coming down, it looks like we could probably carve out a little bit of space just to get underneath here, yeah? Uh, at a reasonable incline slash decline. Get it out there and join them both together to go out towards basically where those power lines are. So that's the idea. I think that'll be an easy enough change. Won't be the highest volume of traffic, but it should be okay because we do have other places you can get in and out of the city. And maybe further down the line, we'll have a bypass going around it uh, in terms of the highway. Just again, to give more people options how to get in and out. The other one then would be that we've got railway up here for this industrial area that we've been building. It's going to be a straight line road coming down this way as well. So that's going to be another connection. And then in the future, this highway is going to connect over to here. And that should allow people to kind of get up here and maybe we could do another bridge, right? So people can get across into the industrial area or down into the city again. So it's again, just think about giving people all the options you can get around the city or through the city if you need to. Right, so the harbor, it's not powered on right now. We need to kind of extend the map tiles all the way out. And that way we can join the sea lanes. We're going to be able to do that when we reach the next milestone, which we're pretty close to. Big city. It's going to give us 2.8 million, 18 expansion permits. That should be more than enough to get all the way down here connect to the sea lanes and also connect the map tiles all the way up to the edge of the map here and bring in a railway alongside parallel to the highway really and that can feed into our cargo harbor so while we're waiting for that i think we'll get a boost of xp because what i'm planning to do is delete the bus depot and reorganize it somewhat so let's just get started on that i'm gonna hit pause just for a moment so refund 150k bonk see you later i'm gonna move this transformer station just over here for now until i figure out somewhere better to put it and these power lines can probably just be redrawn to be a little bit neater. Because they were put down a bit temporarily while I was doing that road. Alright, so. I want this to be in the same area, but we want to have a road dedicated for the actual bus depot. So let's get our bus depot. And... Actually, we'll have to go with a road. So let's go with a one-lane road. So we need to reserve seven tiles. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So we'll start here. And then we need to come in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it'll be there. But down one, yeah. Okay, so we'll go across with that just for now. So let's just try that. So I think this will give me the space that I'm looking for to put in the buildings at a good angle. So our bus depot can go right there. 150,300 XP. Bonk. And then we can add in now the extra garages. This is what I was saying in the previous episode. I wasn't totally happy with the layout of that. So I counted it up, wrote it down on a notepad. I'm trying to space it accordingly now. Um, so, again, the same thing here, here, and here. And then we want to leave a gap so that the road can continue up on either side. So I think that looks pretty good. And let's get this to go just further across and down. So that's one way. Bonk. Going around. Yeah, so quite happy with that. Obviously, it's just super uniform. But what can I do about it? I want all the extra... Gar um, the, uh, I was going to say trucks, the extra buses. Now we have an additional 105, which seems pretty big. So that should be good. Uh, we are connected. We're not connected to power, sorry. Let's just hook that back up then. So we'll get our power lines. Just bring it straight over the highway, I guess. And just connect that in. All right, cool. There we go. All right, so new bus depot is pretty much ready to go. I'm going to make some changes to it, though, to make it look a little bit nicer. Um, so the idea was to extend, we'll use developer tools by pressing home, and then we can press clip. Uh, we can use our clip surface to drag out some of the tarmac so that it continues across the way. So, don't want to spend forever doing this, but just a little bit of time so that we can kind of um, shape it, so that we can fill in some of the gaps to make it look like it's a more cohesive building, I guess. So just like that. Do the same on this one, I think. The other one I'm going to use is, I think the sand surface. Yeah, we'll use that one. So that one can be used to fill in just little patches that we have here. Because I just don't feel like we would have grass here. That'd be kind of weird. In this sort of area, you know, an industrial estate. Uh, and we're not allowed to put trees in these bits because the count, the count has been on the building, I think. I think, anyway. Uh, so we'll just fill some of these patches in. And you can do it relatively quick. I think we can leave those other ones. But then just the bits in between the road and the building.
All right, there we have it. So I just think that looks a little bit better. Just the patches of grass didn't really make sense to me. If I could edit them a bit more intimately, um, maybe adding another patch of grass with some trees in this spot would be better. And I think I can do that, but we'll just leave it for now. Maybe in between episodes, I'll clean that up. I tend to go around to do little cosmetic changes between episodes uh, that I feel like would be otherwise a little bit slow to watch. All right, so with all of those buses ready to go, there are 29 in maintenance, 105 that aren't being used. So what we could do is go back out to our town and have a look at what buses and stuff we could change. So using the public transport view, buses, the ones that are super busy will be the 44A to Millfield, the 33B to Brambles, so the purple line, the blue line. In fact, all of these could do with having some extra. Maybe this one doesn't really need any. It's only got 15% usage. It is dependent on the time of day. It is 7 p.m. This would be kind of a peak time as people are still getting home. So we'll just open up each line, I suppose, and we'll just add maybe two extra vehicles to each one. See how we get on. And if we see the usage going way down, I suppose we can always lower it then ourselves. So the Hawks down one, bring that up as well. This one is the one that goes out all the way to the industrial area, the Pine View one. Now, I've been meaning to change the name of this one because Hawkstown, 66 Hawkstown doesn't really make any sense because of where it actually goes. I could illustrate where it goes in just one second. Uh, we'll call that Sulford because it takes the Sulford Road all the way around. So that's the orange line. So what we could do, I guess I've always found it awkward to turn these things off. All right, so some of the extra buses have started to roll out. We could just follow this one as it makes its way into the town, actually, and see how it's going. Uh, so we'll just speed up time as it's driving on in. Uh, I took a moment just to kind of look over things and look over the routes. I didn't really make any changes, but I was trying to explain them, and I just feel like it's so awkward to explain because this menu takes up such a massive part of the screen. And uh, I didn't want to spend forever like going over all the different routes, but if we just turn off some of these, at least... Yeah, so even just now, trying to explain it, I just got bogged down. But what you need to know is the A and the B would be alternating routes. So these ones are just located in Millfield and Ashfold. So they just go back and forth uh, between two relatively busy-ish areas. But they don't need that many buses because it is lower density population up there. As we get further down, the blue lines, which again are kind of hard to see. I'm trying to flash them on and off for you here by flickering over them. That's kind of Millfield and Hawkstown, right? So Hawkstown's down here. Millfield's up here, and they sort of go, they're just alternating routes that link the two together. So they're very busy because we have all of our kind of medium density uh, mixed residential and commerce down here, and then there's another commercial area up there next to all these row houses. So lots of people live on the edges of these two commercial areas, and they're kind of transferring between the two. And then finally, Pineview and Salford, um, Basically, these two are where a lot of people go to go, go to work. So Salford would be our industrial area, and then Pineview is the big raw resource industrial area that we have out there. Uh, so it's getting dark, so I know that things are a little awkward to see, but we could just follow those buses as they're coming in now and see how they're doing. Slow it back down. I can see actually some of them are really full. So it is now, a little bit of time has passed. It's 9 p.m., so it's not going to be as busy. Well, we can still see a decent amount of people lined up waiting for them. So this is the first time this bus has rolled out. Remember, they're still rolling out all the time at the moment, these extra buses. So I'd be kind of curious just to see how, over time how they get on with all these new peeps. And they have, of course, a nice bus lane to carry them to where they need to go. Now, one of the most popular spots that I would love to declutter, and it seems like it's actually working, is the train station. So previously, at the beginning of this episode, there would have been like 100 people waiting for the taxis. So I was hoping now with adding more and more buses, we can take the pressure off the taxis and just people waiting and using their own cars, obviously. So that's the idea. If we can roll out more buses, maybe we can reduce the amount of people that were waiting here at the train station and at other stops just in general, right? And just encourage more people to take the bus if we can. So we'll look back on it in a little bit of time to see how it's doing. Uh, but 428 passengers for the, the route going into Millfield, that's awesome. And then the kind of reverse of that route has a little bit less people. It's still really good, though. I'm liking those numbers. Uh, but yeah, we'll let it play until maybe tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. We'll get a good indication of how things are going. Uh, so, I have a little um, document of what I've written down of things to add. So, this is another one. Uh, a few people mentioned that, you know, a, a lot of English towns especially would have a lot of housing right up against the railway. For two reasons I didn't really do that. One, I didn't I didn't think it'd be nice to have, you know, houses against the rails for obvious reasons. Noise pollution, I guess. It'll make citizens unhappy and possibly unwell. At least it did in the previous game. Um, so I don't fully know if they'll get sick in this game from it, but they'll definitely be unhappy being next to rails like that. So ideally, you'd want to kind of not have that. But if we're trying to recreate a more lived-in, realistic type city, I guess there are just going to be pockets of lower land value houses that are living next to things like rail. So let's do it. 
So we've got our row housing, but what I'd like to do at least is keep them somewhat uniform. So maybe just go in as far as three. So these would be smaller houses generally. So some of them won't actually brush all the way up against the rail. Some of them will. Unfortunately. But these ones, yeah. And this will just keep at least looking somewhat even. And maybe we can have some pathway that cuts in between here. So a lot, a lot of extra people moving in this area. Might not be a bad idea to throw in a car park or something here. Now, this one, same sort of thing, right? Three, I think, is fair. I'm just making use of a lot of the space more so than we had before. So because the sun is setting, I think we'll just brighten up the day and change the day-night cycle to be off. Then we'll turn it back on when it gets to be morning. It is summertime, so the day lasts quite a long time, which is nice. We have little pockets of high rent issues here. Again, I could run that mod, might do it next episode to fix that because they don't seem to be fixing it themselves and then we have this issue that's been prolonged for a while as well level five vegetable fields um have a problem where you got no car access but it does still operate and work just fine it's just this visual noise of all these little issues here same with the dairy house it's not doing anything at the moment nobody's working it because no company will take it on lots of little bugs man oh yeah our housing or sorry our schools are reaching their cap 949 students out of a thousand, so we're going to expand this one as well, extension wing. So this school operates for Broadfield, Westgate, Ashfold, and Greystones. So that's going to be Greystones, Broadfield, Ashfold, and Westgate. So something I've realized is that I don't think Hawkstown has any place for elementary schools. <laughs> so that could be an issue. So residents, how many children? 431. Hmm. It looks like I never gave them a way out. Or a way to get educated. Uh, so yeah, I'm trying to think of where that would go. Because this place is pretty cramped. Now, there could be like an elementary school here. Maybe that would serve them. Or we could just select this as an operating district. Add it on. So now we're allowing this school, which has 500 additional capacity, to take on the students of Hawkstown. The potential students. It is an additional 430 children. So that would fill it up. I guess what you could also do is look at the demographics and add them all up and hopefully your your school can reach that capacity. So 175 there, 562, so let's say about 700 then, about 1000 then including Westgate, Ashfold is then going to have another 20. Yeah, so just about actually, so this is 1500 capacity now, adding all of these up, we're just around that 1500 number, give or take. And our little area that we did in the last episode is looking pretty good. Our little community pool, the lower end housing, the trees are starting to come in a bit better now, some of the bushes at the back. I filled them in with patches of grass to make it look um, just a little bit better as well, some of the uh, developer tools and things like that. And then we have it... Oh yeah, I didn't show this, but in between episodes I was curling this exit around, back out, onto... Oh, this place is re being renamed. This is supposed to be Salford Road. Salford Road. Go. It goes all the way up to the industry, and it does a double wrap on itself. It's a bit weird. Double loop, almost. Anyways, um, yeah, so Cozy Street here. I had to rebuild, but I couldn't get it so that it's like... It has this little decline in it, and drive, it drove me mad. But at a certain point, I just had to leave it. So it's a bit of a weird, wavy hill. Uh, and retaining wall, but it, you know, it is what it is. But inside here now, we have so a couple of car parks, and then some playgrounds, dog park, and another playground over there. So I think that's kind of a nice little area. I don't know if it should be tucked behind the car parks, but I think it's still kind of cool. Makes use of the space anyway. And then refilled it back in with trees and things like that. So really loving the look of that area. I think it actually has kind of gelled together relatively well. We have our double subway track, and we need to just kind of bring it in on a straight line down. Now, the second, gonna... yes, it does fit into here. And we'll turn this on and just do something like that just for a moment. So I need to kind of do what I've done here, which is create a diagonal line, and then it branches into the building itself. So if that's going to be our straight line there, we can maybe just choose a spot where it becomes a 145 degree line. Would that be the right one? If we can get it. And then we'll build our track starting roughly around here. Milestone 11 unlocked. Big city. The city is coming along nicely. That's what I said. 18 expansion permits and we are making money. Alright, so now this is what we have. All these connections need to feed in here. 
Now, weirdly, I've noticed the subway only has a double track or a one-way track. Unlike trains, it doesn't have a single two-way track. Fair enough. Uh, but it does make things, placing them just a little bit more awkward. All right, that's better. Okay, now curve tool. So we'll just grab a point here, click into where we want to go at 180 degrees, and then just curl it up until that thing goes away. 12 meter curl, that's okay. Keep getting uh, population increases, milestones. Oh, I guess from all the new row housing that went in. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, so I've actually got it relatively clean looking, quite happy with it now. It did take a while of like playing around with that. And I've just turned back on the normal day and night cycle as well. So it's about 2 p.m. in the day. It actually spent a lot of time just on triple speed doing that. Uh, so if you remember, the weird thing about this, and something I'm observing here actually that just indicates to me that this is done slightly wrong, would be that these probably need to be reversed to be the other direction. But then they'd be on the inside track, so that's just kind of confusing me at the moment. And we can't just give them a double track, because it's... Well, I guess you maybe could to allow them to do either. So it would have to be like that. So that would kind of work, right? It allows you to kind of get back out the same direction. Same with that. I just feel like that looks a bit crazy, but maybe that's just the way it's supposed to be done. <laughs> but yeah, I'll have to fix that bit. That's the only bit that's broken, so I'll just fix that right now. Uh, there we go. It took a little while, but that's as good as I can get it. I still think it looks a bit weird the way they just branch like that, but I guess that's what they have to do if they want to go out onto the outer line and be able to come in, right? And that way we don't have to provide a connection around the back. Now this one does say that there is no track connection, so maybe one loop down here or something could look kind of good if we bring that out and around, so might get to that. But we're not going to be able to tunnel through until the city until the next episode at least, when I start doing the road layout for that part of the city. Instead what we can do now is we've just unlocked all those map tiles, so let's at least hook up the trains and the cargo harbor uh, for this episode. So, I think this has to come all the way out to down here. So that's going to be six permits, that's 137,000. So we'll just buy that. And then we want to get everything next to the highway, basically. And that's going to be a further ten. Yeah, that's alright. This actually leaves us with two to spare. Uh, okay, so let's see how we're doing. So we'll go open up the transport, the water view. And, ah, so we're just a tiny bit short from the sea lanes down here. Let's go down a bit further. Alright, so... Water. Medium seaway. Now, it's gonna look a bit weird just coming straight out, but, I mean, there's not much we can do until we unlock more tiles in the future, but... That's basically it. Four kilometers. Just straight in. Boom. And I suppose we could just bring it in this way as well. So, for some reason, ships are gonna decide to go along this way and then take a hard left and go straight up. But, I mean, that's, that's the game. Can't do anything about it. They sh I feel like they should allow you to manip- oh my god. They should allow you to manipulate sea lanes just outside of your map borders or something because it's a bit unfair. But anyway, I guess that's just the way it is. Hopefully this doesn't cause like a tsunami or something. But we're looking okay. Alright, so with that in place, now we can turn this on. And we can make get our first uh, deliveries coming in. So, something that seems to be broken with the placement of this, and it might need adjustment to do with the key walls, I would assume, is I can't place the cargo cranes on. It says, no car access and road required. But I don't know why that would be. The road symbol's appearing here. Obviously, it's a cargo harbor. So, not sure what that's about. And then the same is true for when I tried to place a warehouse here. I, I removed that road, and I tried to place one in, and it said no road access. But it's connected to a road at the back. So I really, so I'm not too sure what's going on there. So it might, might require some adjusting again. I, I don't know how that happened. Um, all right. So what we could do is anyway go into our cargo ship route tool, which is blindingly white. Create a new route starting there, coming into our left, and then going back out. And it does actually continue to follow the loop around, which is good. And then we'll do the same from this side. Bring one in here. But go to the other. Or the other crane and then out you go all right so pretty simple hooked up both sides of the map there's no other exit points or anything so that should be fine and we've turned it on and it has road access like the building does 
So it should be able to get out to go into the city if it needs to deliver things in there. Uh, what we could do, that's going to be a bit of a temporary measure, but I'd like to just see rail running. Um, so what we could do is maybe smoothen out the terrain just a little bit on the way over from out here. So let's see, if we just grab a smaller brush, we set this as our height by right clicking and then start somewhere down by the rail here. You just go forward and it'll eventually get us to that height as we work our way all the way out. All right, so we've reached it. So it's obviously a kind of a little bit of a strange way of doing it, but we can smoothen that after the fact. I'd just like to get the actual rail placed and have a nice steady incline the whole way towards where we're going. Uh, so train line, we'll make it a double track, I suppose. And yeah, is that what we want to do? I mean, yeah, I guess why not? We can always change just little bits if we have to. Uh, I'll just use freeform tool for now and we'll turn on those contour lines so you can see what we're doing. So 180. Pretty much go to there. One percent incline. That's what we like to see. Nothing too crazy. One point three percent. Try to maintain that pretty much everywhere, I guess. All right. So then we can just maybe just attach it right to the edge there. All right, so we've got a double track now going alongside the highway and it connects to Golinda. <laughs> Milford, Milford, Golinda. All right, fair enough, Golinda. I think it'd be kind of cool if they just named the city on this entire, like the east side of your tile, one name. The north side of the tile, one name, the west side and the south side. And that way, at least, no matter what connection, like, area you connect to on this side, it's just connected to the next city over. To me, that would just make more sense. I just, I don't know, it frustrates me that there's all these, like, side separate names. I wonder, does it, like, if you just keep creating connections, does it, it'll have, it'll just generate new names for each one. And does that count as different places delivering things in? I, I don't know. Because you'd assume that behind the scenes, there's some sort of thing running to say, like, Oh, you know, this city has a, an inventory and it requires this. Not that it's running a population or anything like that, but it just says, hey, Galinda, you know, has a requirement for 100 grain every three months. And that, you know, is if you can provide that, you make money. That is, I assume that's what's going on somewhere uh, behind the scenes. But anyway, so we've got that coming in. What we'll need to do then is I'm just going to make a very temporary route until we set up the city, just so we can actually get this to look kind of cool and get it running. We'll just go forward and straight into the into the ground there. And the incline is 1%, that's fine by me. And we'll just bring this further in, that's a 6% incline. So we want it to just go in a little bit. Like I said, because it's so temporary, I don't mind being a little crazy with it. And we'll just bring this back up now to zero. And that's a 5% incline. That's not too bad. All right. So we need to basically join onto there. <laughs> so we'll just get this outer line to go forward and off to the right. Just a split like that. I know it's not connected to other things. This is just temporary. I just want to see it running. And see if we make any money and stuff with it, you know. All right. So we've now connected our rail, at least to the southern part of the map. So what I can do is go into the cargo route railway tool. Create a new route starting here and connect it over to uh, this one, Pine Views Business Park. So I can just go straight in there. And do we have to just click it again to finish it off? Yeah, right? So completed that route. So that's done now. What I was thinking, what the reason I paused there is because I was thinking that we could add on that second rail here. Yeah, it doesn't widen the building and then the storage can still fit on. So that's good. So yeah, we can make another second rail there in the future. So that we can receive things from both directions. So now we're receiving cargo, which you can see coming in. Doing its thing. And hopefully, so they're unloading right now, right? So you're coming in with coal, 150 tons. And we're not storing anything just yet. 
It must have just literally gotten removed as soon as uh, that ship came in with stuff. So we've got other ships coming in now, a bunch of them actually. So convenience food, 150 tons. This guy's carrying nothing, so maybe he's going to take something out of here. I'd just be curious to see what we export. It's kind of what I'm most curious about. They're really just pushing into each other as well. Just wait for that guy to get done and then see what he's got. We've got trains rolling out of the rail yard now for the first time, so that's good to see. And this guy, I wonder... Oh, yeah, I just realized what he's going to do. He's going to stop and then roll back. Because <laughs> he's coming in this way. I wonder, is there a way I can create a smaller loop so you can just come straight around into here if you come out of the rail yard? Might be a bit awkward. Uh, so that's that ship. That's the one we were just looking at. Now, I'm still hovering over it. And it still says zero. But clearly, he's picked up something now. Oh, my God. How the hell did he get all this? Oh, okay. Well, there we go. Okay, that's a bit hard to follow because they're so ingrained in each other. We'll have to just check on another ship coming in with nothing. But they're all plow bringing tons of stuff in here right now. We're up to 1,400 stuff. Convenience food, beverages, pharmaceuticals, food, local mail, rock, chemicals, and grain. So if we had to look at our production menu. Where is that again? Budget panel of production. Like, we make tons of rock i'm just surprised to see that coming in at all you know we're supposed to be exporting a surplus of a thousand one hundred tons per month so every day every 24 hours that's a month in the game so a thousand one hundred tons needs to be moving out now a truck normally holds like 25 i think 25 tons uh these guys can carry much more so it'd be interesting to see a bunch of trucks coming along delivering everything out this way or into the other one indeed right they can obviously drop it here we've got garbage in there concrete Rock, 198 tons, etc. So, be interesting to see if that makes us money or not by connecting it up that way. We'll have to leave it running for a bit. So, what we could also do, that's our rail yard. I'm going to get rid of the old rail yard now. So, it's over here. It was just built on a big hill. There's a train coming out of it right now, but sorry. Time to go. And hopefully, the other trains can still turn around to go north if they need to. But that should mean that all of our rail is coming out of here now. 3 out of 15, yeah. So they're just generating trains and just rolling out now, basically. And they're going to have to wait for each other to clear the line. There's only one way out. But that should only be a problem for now, right? They're not all going to be rolling out in the future all at once. And I just wanted to check something. Are they on... They're on day and night routes. You could have it so that the passenger trains only run during the day and the industrial trains run at night. Or just to say that the industrial trains only run at night. Might be kind of beneficial, maybe. And there's the options there, so it must be there for a reason. So that's Cargo Railway Route 2. So this is going to be down to the Cargo Harbor. So just to catch people up in case you're unaware where the other cargo rail is, we've got another one up here. It's a cargo terminal rail full of stuff. Well, not really. I mean, it's, it's a fifth full right now. 3,000 tons of stuff in there. And then we have the other one down here. So it's just two cargo rail, right? So down here at Pineview, and then up here at this other industrial park that we haven't named yet, and then now there's this new one that's also a harbor down at the bottom to take it out of the map. So I feel like we got some good connections going. Money is still pretty good. I was just worried by turning all these things on and adding them that it would cost us lots, but it seems like we're totally fine. I'm also not seeing a, a big jump in money either, so I was kind of hoping that exporting goods would start making money, but it might take a while, you know? That might take a while. So what time is it? It's 11. I guess we'll turn on the, off the day-night cycle just for a little bit. And is there anything else we could do here? I guess we could just still work on the subway just a little bit to make it look a bit nicer while we allow these things to kind of load and unload and see what we end up making. Population. We're not going to do much of population this episode. The next one, which shouldn't be too long after this, will just be about developing the road infrastructure for the city. So I need to kind of bring that key wall further around the river. And then it's just going to be a matter of just... A completely blank canvas layout, really, of what we want to do in there. Putting down... We've got all these development points, so... Things like the hospital, we can start unlocking now. I know that we're going to want the bigger fire station. We're going to want the bigger police headquarters. City hall. So that's lots of stuff. We still have 16 points. There's going to be a prison bank. Central bank. Hmm. I mean, ideally, yeah, but... I want to save my points just for a little while. Air? We won't need an airport just yet. Tourist attractions? Maybe. 
Oh yeah, some of this stuff is really cool, like the radio telescope, the geological research center, you find more fertilities that way. The medical university near the hospital might be ideal. Although I think it acts as a hospital as well, doesn't it? Increases the efficiency of healthcare service buildings. Hmm. Two, it's only two points, and that's only two points. It would be nice to get some specialized universities. Alright, so something else I wanted to do was um, see if we can make our own fuel. We actually do pull in oil. I never showed building it, but it was just this little area here. It's kind of temporary the way it's been thrown down, to be honest. I'd like to make a more dedicated, nicer looking area than that. But if we have a look at our budget panel production-wise, uh, raw resource of oil, we produce 440 tons. Our surplus is 384. So we actually unlocked in the previous episode the specialized building called a fuel plant. So I don't know how many workers it takes but if it's anything like the paper factory it's probably like a thousand uh unemployment has just reached eight percent so i'm starting to think like yeah okay it's we could put this down and most people will probably fill it probably going to be lacking a lot of the educated workforce that we want but we'll throw it down see what we get out of it so up here would be a good place for it i think next to the cargo thing again might change how this looks when we do i might do a slight redevelopment of this area and just move some of these buildings around the rail won't do any of that but some of the road infrastructure around here it was originally designed for something else and now it's <laughs> it's just kind of a placeholder area for our, our jobs. So we'll just pop it down. 1000 XP. Love to see it. And let's have a look at what this is going to require from us. So we have to wait till a company takes hold of it. But a plus 2% industrial efficiency citywide. Reduction of air pollution and ground pollution of 5%. Uh, across everything. So that's awesome. So we'll just play time. There we go. 119% efficiency. Not enough employees yet though. So only 549. Wow, that's not nearly as much as I thought. 137 highly educated and 274 well educated. That's the bit that's a bit difficult to fill, but the regular educator should be fine. So I think we'll fill this. I think we'll fill that just fine. And now we're going to be making petrochemicals. So hopefully that'll make us some big money now that we're connected to the cargo terminal. Bring that all the way down to the harbor, ship it, send off our petrochem, our fuel, and uh, hopefully start raking it in. That's the plan. Uh, what I'd really like to see, though, is a train roll out of here and go straight into there, if possible. But it doesn't really matter. It does seem like I've cleared any of the congestion that was happening before where trains are disappearing. They seem to just know how to get into where they're going. Look at that. A smooth reverse all the way in. Full up as well. This guy is carrying 863 tons of stuff. Vehicles, metals, mail, cotton, livestock, timber, and convenience food. Unloaded. Rolling straight back out. Yeah, quite happy with this then. Seems like it's a, a decent layout. That train's just pulled up ahead. Oh, it's doing the reverse maneuver. God damn it. Hate to see it. Can't seem to help it. I mean, he, he, they all have the potential to just do that loop. But they won't do it. I'm. It must be that they'd rather face forward and they see a shorter path to doing that. I just don't like the fact that they roll over a, uh, a crossing. Now... It's not like this This might never even be used, but it's, it's just one of those little pet peeves of mine. Because you could potentially put some offices or something down by the key the key side down here. Why not? Some admin buildings. Maybe, um, you know, a little firehouse or something just to keep the place cool. And then the idea was that this was going to expand out with a big storage on here. Especially if it becomes really busy. I don't know if we'll build a second one. So let's see. Have we cut down on the trip? Yeah, look. So our buses are working out really well. I know it's late at night here. But this was full of people by the taxi stands now before. And now people are... Now taxis are waiting to get people. That's the ideal situation. <laughs> we want our public transport taking people around. Yeah, it's a stark contrast. So our extra buses, our new bus depot is doing wonders. That's great to see. Buses every 15 minutes. You know, I live near Crawley, as people may know. As I've mentioned, in the UK at the moment. And uh, they have a blue bus that goes around. It says on it... I can't remember exactly what it says, like the Crawley link or something. You know, every 15 minutes, you'll get a bus. And that's basically the way it is. Every 15 minutes, they roll by. Actually, I think it says every five minutes. <laughs> it might be something crazy like that. Because we do have two rolling in right behind each other. But, you know, depending on the time of day, I wonder... I don't think you can do it in this game, but what would be nice is if you could, say, reduce schedule at night. It seems like you can only have them on or off. 
So you could have a, a copy, a, a schedule that's the exact same, but you assign it less vehicles and just operate that at nighttime. That would be a way around it. That could be kind of interesting. So you could have the 44A Millfield night. So something I haven't looked at in a while is Chirper. People were annoyed by the noises it makes, so I just ended up turning it off. Also, a lot of what people said in the past just didn't make any sense. Uh, they were like complaining about pollution when there was zero pollution where they lived and where they worked. And I was like, okay, I don't, don't get it. But Haley Jennings here, two tweets in a row. Our education system is amazing. Happy to live in the city. I'm loving our new improved, improved homes. Electricity is struggling a bit. Daniela Murphy, the city's incredibly noisy. Yeah, well, that's what happens when you build new houses next to the rail line. And that red line's just only getting busier and busier, man. I would not want to live in those houses. Uh, we could really use some more residential buildings in the city. Yeah, don't worry. Big city expansion's coming soon. It doesn't feel safe. Yeah, people have said that before about crime. It doesn't feel safe going out at night. Let's have a look at our crime metrics. Yes, sorry. There it is. Jail availability, prison availability. Average crime, 7%. So we do have a police station down here, but there's some crime in the uh, mixed residential buildings. And they've been told to operate these districts. Maybe budget-wise, we could increase the services. Can we do that? So police administration. Ah, they're at 80%. They enforce the law and apprehend criminals while administration handles the courts, banking, and welfare. Now, that just incre uh, increases their efficiency, right? So I haven't actually checked this in a while, but... Everything else is at 100. I must have turned down police for some reason back in the day when we were struggling. But hopefully that... um fixes things up more space for police vehicles and you can just add it right on are they all patrolling yeah okay let's do that all right it's got some new guys rolling out and patrolling love to see it man it is lashing it down wow the sky looks really good actually though so what are our current issues you have some people waiting for a hearse we have the high rent issues in the city itself one of the buildings actually became abandoned Huh, one of the low rent housing. How unusual. They were unhappy. Small homes. Well, that's kind of the, the point. <laughs> well, you can knock it and let another one resurface and see what happens. Hey, there was some squatters, some people living in there. It said abandoned. <laughs> Where's everybody coming from? Yeah, I'm not too sure about that. I thought if it's abandoned, nobody's inside of it anymore. Uh, Westgate High School. Oh, that reminds me. The college needs an expansion as well. Provides further room for more eager learners. 300,200 XP. Alright, college is looking nice. I'm really liking this area. I feel like this looks like a really quite realistic area. Kind of messy, things overlapping each other. It's like real life. I'm not saying it's efficient or good, but I think it's actually looking quite nice. And I say that as somebody who's just surprised at it. I know I'm the one that built it, but I'm like, wow, it actually kind of came together. <laughs> so that's good. And then we have our new row housing in here. You can't see the rail, but it's kind of nice on the curved road like this, isn't it? I know there's little gaps here and there, but I don't know. Maybe some trees or bushes could kind of um, obscure what's happening in between the gaps there. And then we have this big gap here. But yeah, these houses are kind of nice. Yeah, a lot of these ships don't actually have anything. It's the morning commute. I thought we could just at least uh, have a look at how people are maybe getting to work a bit. So we can follow our train. That's not our one. That's the ones I was talking about, which are just doing whatever. But the train station's really the hub of all activity here. So one of the things I feel like we could do just to follow uh, a day in the life, almost. I can't necessarily pick a worker where I know exactly where they're going to go. But we could, for instance, follow a bus that's leading out of this area in just a moment and see how it gets to the train station and then yeah maybe where some of those people get off so let's take uh, this one for instance so this is our 44a to millfield and uh, we're coming up to an area that has 21 passengers waiting actually so we can speed up time a little bit as, as time goes on whoa that's some crazy driving right there <laughs> So we do have a lot of traffic coming in. It is the morning commute now. So what time is it? It's going to be 6.44 a.m. And this yellow bus here is going to be taking people out to the industrial area. And this is a commercial zone, so there's a lot of people waiting to get into their various things, I guess, to deliver things in. What are you doing? A van trying to get the fatty bite. Trying to get your breakfast at 6.55 a.m. He's like, I need to get there before 7, before they stop serving the McFatty. The McFatty breakfast. So quickly, just quickly park, rush out, get in there. 
Oh, he, it's a she. I think they're in. Actually, they're just walking around to the back, are they? Possibly, I don't know. <laughs> All right, so we picked up some people. 61 now. Almost a full load. And we're going to go on now to the next destination, 1678 Underhill Street. Ten passengers waiting for us. We'll take our single lane exit. We've got to wait, of course, for a clear moment to strike. Go, go, go. <laughs> Merge on. And then we're going to be taking the first left on this roundabout to get down. Busy roundabout, though. We're left-hand drive, so everyone's just waiting on the cars that are coming right to, for their chance to get across. Now, this lane on the left here is forward or left. It's a shame we couldn't make it left only, but that's just the way it is. Because that would keep the flow going a little bit smoother, but it's not too bad. All right, we're making our way down. Now, this route is going to continue on straight all the way down towards the train station. We've already got 61 people on it. The next stop up ahead has 24 people waiting. So we're going to fill up the bus probably. I would imagine most people aren't getting off. Alright, here we are. Full up to 80 now. And the stop, well we can check the stop as we go past it. Has 10 people remaining. But there's another bus just there in the distance coming down. So they'll have people in no time. The morning commute is running efficiently, as far as I can see it. All right, down this mini, slightly, slightly busier, busier area where um, we have our elementary school and some of the mixed residential shops here. Wow, a lot of people at this stop. No room for them. But we somehow managed to cram two extra people in there. And there's 16 dogs on board, which is crazy. Yeah, so 82. So maybe a couple of people are standing right at the front, really pressed up against it. You know how it is. Morning commutes. Awful. Absolutely awful. 55 people waiting at that stop now. So if anything, and you can see the dominoes, they're full on these buses, a lot of them. So if anything, we could add more to this for this morning commute. Seems like we're not fully servicing the area. Maybe. maybe just maybe by one bus. That super loud noise is the post office just across there. Right, so we're getting out. Some people are going to be getting out for sure. And then we're taking on a new group. So I would imagine some of these people are going to be going into the train station. We'll follow. We'll just pick a person and follow them. Whoever turns left first. All right, I've got someone here. Morris. Morris Tanner. They're going to work. They're a teen. They're wealthy, or their household is wealthy. And they work as a manager, even though they're a teen, at Steel Saurus. We'll follow this person then. So I'm gonna have to lose them immediately. But Morris Tanner. So they're on the train. Train's now got 99 peeps on it, and it's freaking out. Wow, money is looking really good. 150,000. All right, so we're following Morris Tanner on the passenger train. She's going to work, or he? Is it a he? That doesn't really matter. They're going to work at Steel Saurus, 1913 Street, is where they live. They're wealthy, even though they are a teenager. They were born in April of this year. <laughs> A little bit of an uneven ride as we make our way up. Oh, it looks like this place is struggling for water. I'd have to increase the amount of water we produce. All right, we have arrived. So we'll just follow Morris. Oh, just speed up time. Let them get to where they're going. A lot of people getting out here. Morning commute. So, um, uh, the water problem, I think, is just due to... Well, I'm, I'm assuming we just don't provide enough. Water availability is right on the edge. So, I'd actually planned for this. The wastewater treatment plant here is 400,000. Uh, depending on the amount of... We are treating the sewage just fine, actually. But putting another one of these down in this area might help produce just a little bit of extra water. So we'll just place it down right next to its buddy. So, if I do it this way, we actually have a gap between the two. Now, I'll do it this way. That keeps the building symmetrical. Alright, so a second water treatment plant. I'm not upgrading them because the upgrades just seem to make absolutely no sense financially and in terms of efficiency. So just a second one of these, I feel like, will give us the water we need. All 
All right, let's follow Morris Morris again. I, I keep clicking into them. If you click into them, you can't actually follow them. There we go. Wow, they're still just out here. All right, they're all just walking in the rain. Off to work. All right, so I suppose we know how they're going to get there from here, but what we could do is just check then Steelsaurus. So they work in this building here. Combines metals and coal to make steel. Oh, it's one of the more recent factories that I've set up as well, actually. So how's the chemical plant doing? The fuel plant? 462. 102% efficiency. That's nice. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to have to be it for today's episode. Quite happy with the progress so far. The key wall, everything down in this industrial area looking pretty good. We're now primed and ready to go to start building out the layout for the city and start to fill in some of the basics of it. I want to then add, you know, some of the services first before we start really then expanding into the population, trying to handle the traffic as we balloon it up. This railway line here obviously is just temporary, but until we reach the next milestone, I won't really be able to expand across these tiles to kind of bring the railway out further. So the idea is that this railway should come out somewhere along here and then somehow merge down onto this line again. Uh, perhaps even on the other side of the highway. I'm not too sure. I'll have to think about that anyway. That's for a future video. Uh, the same is true for the sea lanes. I don't really mind that the you know the ships have to do that. We don't really see them doing it, I suppose. But obviously the idea would be when we can afford the map tiles, allow them just to join back on onto the sea lanes out this way. Because it's a bit crazy going all the way straight out uh, before they make their turn. Uh, so yeah, so generally pretty happy. I'm surprised we're not making a little bit more money though. I don't think we've really actually exported any petrochemicals yet. Everything we seem to be sending off is things that we do have in surplus, like rock and beverages, I guess. We're sending a lot of metal ore I've seen in there, so it might just take a couple extra months to keep running before we start exporting it. Um, because no doubt we are owed some thick cashola. Now, I've added some buildings, and it's cost us money, and then we've kind of just balanced it out to not really cost anything. So I'm sure maybe we're getting a little bit, but I've seen what other people make from petrochemicals, and in a little bit of testing myself, it should be making more than that. So my guess is it's just a bit of a delayed knock-on effect to actually exporting it. Um, that'd be my guess. Not that it's any big deal. We are making money. I should be happy with what we have. All right, so that's going to have to be it for this episode. Next one, we're going to start working on that big city layout. Look forward to it. All right, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.